स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so now take a bigger example uh, where we have a uh, we have about 10 terms and we have about 12 documents okay and then every element in this matrix represents our tf idf so what we are going to do is we're going to be looking at this and then try to find out uh, which document is closer to the other one okay so this is a very uh, important exercise in the information retrieval at least for document sets which are uh, not very huge so we can you actually use this if the document set is very small for you um again uh, if you look at this i keep repeating this uh, this one is your term vectors for document 1 that means the document 1 contains uh, the words t1 to t10 some of them are missing these terms are missing so we have zero values here and then if you look at this one term vector across the corpus okay uh, so this is very uh, important to understand the structure and most of the time we'll be representing our uh, term document in this fashion okay so how do i uh, represent them actually uh, i am not sure whether i mentioned this in the previous lecture uh, the tf idf uh, which i have spoken about could also be represented using other weighted uh, tf idf uh, one uh, mechanism is uh, to consider uh, tf and then the idf here okay and then this uh, would be replaced uh, not exactly uh, the same as this would be replaced as this okay if uh, if you replace the tf with respect to uh, 1 plus log logarithm of term frequency and if uh, term frequency is greater than 0 and use this value and if it is 0 it is going to be zero so this is again a very important uh, representation of uh, terms in the uh, tf uh, rather uh, document term matrix so in our case we have just used uh, a random generation of these numbers and i re represent them as tf idf the plain tf idf okay so now what is required so we have a set of documents we have collected the term frequencies with respect to uh, the weighted term frequency using tf idf or the log of those uh, uh, which i explained earlier now i want to find out uh, uh, using a query uh, how that particular query is very close to some of those documents and then rank them accordingly okay uh, when when i represent a query query is going to be again a composition of terms right so you can consider that as a document which is very similar to this so i can write a query here and then my query can contain some values related to t1 and then some values related to t3 some value related to t7 and so on okay so this is how i construct this and these terms if it is found we already have created a corpus we already have found some uh, frequency related value for these queries and so on which is that what i am replacing with when somebody gives a query find me a document with term 1 3 and 7 so i go to the uh, dictionary and then find out what the values of what are the values for these three terms and then replace them and then i construct them as a separate vector okay like this so uh, i am now constructing the query it is again very close to it is a close representation of the document now it is possible for me to go and then find out uh, how these uh, 
documents are related to this query and then probably rank them according to the higher highest one which is closer to Q would be the first and the lowest one would be the last in that ranking order. Okay. Uh, we are going to be using some proximity score uh, mechanism to find out how a query is related to this document. Uh, it is usually uh, done using certain uh, uh, formula, let us look at uh, some of them. Uh, I am sure uh, in the earlier case of uh, binary incident matrix, uh, query returned a set of documents uh, for that particular set of keywords, right? but it never gave you the rank. Uh, we definitely require the rank because I just we want to look at the document with highest relevance first rather than something with the lowest relevance. In the case of the binary incident matrix, it is not possible for you to get that rank in that order. So, you have to uh, assume that all documents have the same ranks, but in reality we would like to have a rank for all of those documents. So, we are going to be using some of those measures uh, like uh, Euclidean distance, cosine distance, cluster similarity and Jaggard similarity. Okay. I would be using uh, cosine similarity uh, for the sake of showing some demo and so on. So, why is it not a good idea to use our D1 and D2. So, look at uh, this. Okay. So, if you compute the distance, right, uh, some would be uh, long like this in the vector space. Let us assume that this is your query and then some vector would be very long and some would be very short like this. So, it is not going to really give you a good measure if the length is too long. So, it is not advisable to really go for a distance measure uh, for finding the similar uh, similarity of documents. So, which measure? As I mentioned uh, earlier that I am going to be using uh, cosine distance as the similarity measure because it is a normalized uh, correlation co coefficient. Why is it normalized? Because we are actually uh, dividing the vector by the length of the vector. So, you get, get a unit vector there. So, it is normalized for all the vectors that you are considering. For example, d 1 is normalized to the unit vector and then this also is normalized. Okay. Um, so, for the sake of representation, I am going to be taking uh, uh, two words car and plane. Right? So, we have a query here. Uh, based on the uh, term frequency uh, and the length. So, we have uh, gotten a query in this direction of length uh, here okay. and then we have other documents representing car and plane in various directions. Okay. So, we have D 3 here, D 1 here and D 2 here. D 2 is very close to the plane because it may contain lot of terms related to plane than car. So, it is closely aligned to the axis plane and D 3 is very closely aligned to car for the same reason. So, now when you want to find out um, uh, whether Q 1 is closer to D 3 or D 1 or D 2. So, we use the cosine distance. So, what do we do here? So, we do cos of theta equal to Q 1 dot d 3 divided by q 1 d 3. Okay. We are going to be doing the same thing for uh, q 1 dot d 2 q 1 d 2. Oops. And then this is for the uh, theta 1, let us say call it as theta 2 and then we will have another one cos theta 3 for the third one uh, which is q 1 dot d 3 q 1 norm and then d 3. Uh, so, uh, the values I am going to be finding these values. Okay. 
So, the rank is accorded based on how close this particular is uh, uh, document is uh, to q 1. So, in this case we know visually we can find out that d 3 is close ok. So, that means, uh, we can rank it accordingly d 3 if you look at the rank d 3 will come first and then d 1 and then d 2 right. So, this is how you find the uh, similarity measure between documents and the query that you have just posed and then using this you can now rank the documents accordingly and then say ok D 3 is very close let us take a look at the do document D 3 first before uh, looking at the other ones if I do not get enough information in D 3 ok. As I mentioned earlier cosine distance is preferred and uh, it is very easy to compute the uh, score. Okay, Let us look at uh, a demo before uh, the demo I just want to uh, mention a few things. Uh, what I am doing right now is I am posting all the demos in one uh, space in GitHub uh, under ROM station R A and L P whatever I am uh, showing you as a demo those uh, programs are available in this library this is open sourced. You can take a look at it, you can uh, clone it, you can make changes to that and if you suggest some new ideas into that or you are want to add more programs uh, to this uh, library you are more than welcome to do. If there are any errors found uh, you can also mention or send a note saying that there are some errors and you would like to uh, correct them. I can give you access so that you can do all the uh, changes in the code and then again submit the code back to the uh, open source. Uh, this is something that I would like you to go and then look at it and then uh, add value to that if you want to or you can use this as a uh, playground so that you can play with the demos and uh, understand the con underlying concepts in all these demos ok. Uh, so, now uh, let us uh, uh, go to the demo code ok. So, instead of uh, clicking and then going to the GitHub and then finally going to the uh, collab.research.com. Uh, I have taken you uh, directly to the space. So, when you go to that uh, GitHub space there will be a button uh, which uh, will allow you to come to this collab.research.google.com ok. So, it will open up that particular file uh, so that you can uh, run the application uh, directly from this. So, I am going to run this first. Okay. So, what I have uh, I am just I will first show the output and then I will probably take you to the uh, code and explain what is going on there ok. So, in this case what I have done is uh, I have used the same um, uh, matrix that I had shown you ok the document uh, term matrix this is what I am using it as an input ok and then when I run this what I get is this. Uh, here you have a, a matrix containing all the documents along the x and y axis. I have taken every document in that space and then try to compute the uh, distance from that document to the other documents ok. So, uh, I have not used any query at this point in time. So, we will come to that a little later. So, uh, if you consider document 1 it goes and then finds out the uh, the angle between D naught and uh, D 1, D 2 and D 10 and then it will consider D 1 as the base document and then try to compute all the angles uh, between D 1 and D naught, D 1 and D 2, D 1 and D 6 and so on. So, in this fashion 
uh, if you look at the top uh, side, you will have all the angles computed for all the documents. Okay. So, I am going to be now considering only one document as the reference document and then try to see uh, how closely those documents are related to that particular reference document. So, in this case I am considering a D naught as my reference document here and then uh, I computed the ranks based on the uh, uh, distance. Uh, D 1 is very close, uh, D 6 is the next one and then D 2 is orthogonal to D naught. That means, none of the terms are close to D naught that is why it is not showing any relevance there. So, the most relevant document for me is D 1 here. So, if you go and then look at it pictorially, you will see that. Okay. So, uh, D 1 against D naught because it is the same document dot product of the same will result in 1 or the angle is 0 there. Okay. And then the next one which is closer to D naught is D 1, it is separated by an angle 4 degrees and then you have all the others and then if you look at uh, D naught and D 2, it is separated by 90 degrees. Let me uh, take you to the space uh, where the code is available. As I had shown earlier, right? so the D naught to D 10 matrix here is computed by this. So, first I compute all the angles and then for the plotting sake and ranking sake, I am just using a reference uh, document. Okay, so, I am just using a reference document here as 0 and then trying to find out what is the distance measure or the similarity measure in this case. Okay. Uh, here there are some elements that you will find for plotting. Uh, so, for plotting what you require is you need to find the end distance so that you can draw that uh, vector. So, initial uh, value is 0 and then the end uh, value is calculated by the uh, vector length uh, and then we plot those x and y. Okay. And then I have made the annotation so that it is easy for you to understand that. And then uh, at the end you have the rank order in the sorted fashion. So, once the values are computed for the reference document, you sort the uh, document with respect to the reference document. Use case for printing the rank is the ascending order. Okay. All right. So, we have seen uh, how these documents could be compared uh, when uh, the IDF, uh, TF IDF values are available. So, now uh, let us try to construct a query and then see how uh, uh, the similarities are uh, measured and then how the ranks are computed. Okay. So, in this case what I am going to be doing is uh, earlier case you saw uh, the document 0 as the reference and then we computed the rank. And now, we are going to be considering uh, a document 2 as a query. As I mentioned earlier, right, the query can be constructed uh, with respect to the term that are present in the queries and uh, it can be construed as a uh, document as well. So, now let us consider D 2 as our query. I am going to be changing my reference. We already have computed all the angles. I am only going to change the reference document as my query. I will make it as uh, uh, Okay. and I am going to be running this uh, program to find out how this uh, distance varies with respect to the query D 2 that I have chosen. Okay. So, if you look at uh, the query D 2 query on itself is going to give you 0 as I mentioned earlier because it is a dot product of the same will give you uh, the value of uh, 0. So, you have it there and then you have uh, D 2 at an angle uh, D 2 to D 9 is 41 and then uh, D 1 and D naught are orthogonal to uh, the document 2. Okay. So, if you look at the rank here, it, the query uh, is closer to D 9 and D 
8 and D 6. You know if you look at the other angle they are 61, 66, 71 and so on. That means, uh, the document D 9 and D 8 are closer to uh, D 2 than any other document in this space. So, in this way you can actually uh, uh, play with this numbers uh, like the reference document or you can construct a new query and then add as part of the uh, matrix that you have here uh, in this and then try this. Okay. So, make sure that you use the right range I have hard coded the ranges uh, in this program. So, you may want to uh, avoid that hard coding and want to give some variables there. So, that you can find the actual uh, sizes of the matrices and then do the computations accordingly. Okay. Uh, for the explanation sake, I just uh, put together some simple program for you. So, you, you can go ahead and then change this in the uh, JIT hub that I have provided for you. Okay. So, this is the uh, example of how you can construct the uh, similarity of document. Okay. Let us go back to the uh, presentation again. So, we have just finished our uh, cosine distance uh, demo and then one more thing we also want to uh, look at uh, when we uh, try doing the similarity for huge document as set. So, we can create one uh, inverted index for all the documents that we have. For example, uh, for the given to uh, a document that I have, you can construct a term frequency and a posting. Okay. Uh, for every uh, term, um, you have a column. Okay. So, this is the column for you and then the term frequencies uh, for the uh, word ball across the document space. Uh, in this case, this is going to be 4 okay. and then the postings. The postings is nothing but uh, the documents where this particular word is present. So, if I have the word ball present in document 1, 2, 8 and 9, I just mention that. So, if you want to do the uh, comparison or the similarity of uh, the documents with respect to the query where you have the word ball is mentioned, you do not have to go through the entire uh, document space. You can look at this postings and then say okay, document 2 has this. So, let us go and then look at document 2 and then find out how close that document 2 with respect to this uh, term that I have in the query. So, in the same way, you can go and then look at it. So, this way you can reduce uh, the computational uh, time, you know, instead of going through the entire document set, you can only go to a small subset where that particular term is present in those documents. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, so this is an exercise for you. Uh, the exercise is you have to construct a TF-IDF matrix using the log weighting that I had shown earlier uh, for the corpus uh, Shakespeare's play. Okay. And then uh, you need to construct a query vector containing some terms. See, for example, you pick a few terms uh, at random in this Shakespeare's play and then uh, construct that as a vector and then use the cosine similarity that I had shown in the demo and find out uh, how these plays are stacked with respect to the uh, rank. So, this is one exercise for you and the program is already available. What you have to change is you only have to change the uh, document term matrix that I have given with uh, the Shakespeare's play. Okay. Uh, this would be uh, very useful if you uh, implement this small exercise.